Hi, sixth grade. I'm going to go over our Google Form. Last week you started it, and this week we're going to finish it up. Um, with your Google Form, you are creating five questions about a topic that you are familiar with and know the answers to. And now you're going to have all of us try it um, next week to see if we can answer all your questions. So with your form here, you need to come up with five questions. Uh, you need to use at least three different question types. So just to recap here, our question type on this one here with just the circles is multiple choice, and you can only select one answer. Our next one here is a drop down list. So they'll have to hit the drop down to see your choices. Our next one here is another multiple choice. Another multiple choice. This one here is the um, grid. So I'm going to choose a question here. I'll show you how that works. Um, when you create that question type, um, you are able to choose a multiple choice grid. So you have to put in um, rows and columns as answers. So if we take a look at this, um, when we're done, you can see that um, you have your row, your columns up here and your rows right here. Um, again, you're only going to be able to fill in one of these at a time. Um, let's see, I don't must not have another question type. You can also do, oh, here's one, short answer, okay? So here we have five questions. We have three different question types that are used. So if you have forgotten how to put in a question, remember it's just this plus button right here. Once you do that, you can choose what type of question you want from right here. Um, last thing with your questions. One question needs to have either a picture or a video that you either have to look at the picture or watch the video to be able to actually answer the question. So we looked at this last week. On this one here, I had answered the question um, about this picture. So it says, how many points would you score if you shot the ball from locations one and two? So I have to look where is one and two and figure out um, what the point value would be if I shot the basketball from these two spots. That's what I mean. Um, you can also have it where you have to watch a video. So this is a video link, and I have to watch this video and decide whether the person making the shot at the end of the video should have gotten the points counted or not. So that's what I mean by having a question where you have to have a video or picture that you have to look at or watch to be able to answer it. Now, once you have your five questions done, um, and you can insert pictures, like right here we inserted a picture that's with the little mountain right here. This is the little um, add a video button. And you can move these all around. So let's say this picture should be up above. You can go to those three little, or um, six little dots and you can click and you can drag them around and you can put them in different order. So I moved that back because that's not where I want it. But that's how you can drag things around and move them in new spots if you need to. All right, so once you have all your questions done, they're on the right order. How do I get a fancy little graphic up here? That is what we call a theme. So you go to the little paint palette up here, and you can either choose a plain old colored theme, or you can actually um, do an image upload. So if I click on that, I can upload an image, and they have a bunch of images provided already. So you might find one that would relate to your topic. You can upload um, your own picture if you have one, or you can take a photo that you might have from your photos that you could put in there. Okay, Or you can just simply stick with your own um, ones that are in here. Find something that somewhat relates, or if you can't find anything that relates, um, one thing you can do is you can always just use a plain old color. But I do want some type of theme up there. It doesn't have to be graphic. It could be a color if you'd like. All right, next is the making it as a quiz. So this is where you're going to have to hit the little gear button right here, go to your settings. And so general, it's asking, do you want to collect the email address of the people who take your quiz? If you uncheck this, people can fill, fill out your form and you don't know who did it. There's no name attached to it. Now, if you want their name attached to it, you would want to check off to collect their email especially if you're not asking for their name as one of your questions, which you shouldn't be. All right, next, require sign-in. So are you asking, if you send this particular file, are you wanting your people to have to sign in? So we can restrict that only people in the plenary schools, which is our trusted organization, 
can get into our form. If we want anybody to fill this out, we would remove that. Um, limit so that the people filling out your form can only fill it out once. That would be checked off. Um, unless you want them to try it multiple times, then you would uncheck it. So these are choices that you can make. Recipients can edit after submit. So let's say I turn it in and then I realize the answer to the question wrong. I can, if this is checked off, I could go back in and fix my answer. Or if I leave it unchecked, once you turn it in, you're done. And then recipients can see summary charts or text responses. So let's say I have filled out your form. I want to see what, how everybody else has answered the questions. So if this is checked off, I can see that. If not, I can't see that. All right, next is presentation. So this is when the form is up on the screen for the person to fill out. Do you want to have them show a progress bar to show how much further do they have to complete the form? Like how many more questions do they have? Do you want your questions to be shuffled in different order so that if somebody's sitting next to somebody and you're both filling out the form, they couldn't cheat off of each other? And lastly, show a link to submit another response. So let's say you want them to try it more than once, you could show a link for them to go into it a second time. And again, these are choices. You can choose to do that or not. Lastly, the one that you have to set is this one. You have to slide this over. Yours is probably going to look like this. You're going to slide it over and make it a quiz. Um, right here is where it's going to be in lock mode on Chromebook. So if you would check that off, that means they cannot go searching on their Chromebook to find the answer. Their Chromebook will be locked down, and the only thing they can do is fill out your form. Um, grade release would be... How do I find out how I did on this quiz? Immediate after I hit submit or later after the, the person who made the form reviews it. The only time you'd want this option is if you have a short answer or a paragraph answer that you have to read yourself um, to determine the point value. Um, so the respondent, the person who fills it out, could see the questions that they missed along with the correct answers. Now, if you don't want them to see the correct answer, you would just uncheck that. So they'll see how they did. They may have gotten a 7 out of 10, and they'll see which three they missed, but they won't know what the right answer is. So the one you have to make sure you check is this one right here. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and click on Save. And then your last but not least option here is you've given it a quiz, but now you've got to go and give the right answer. So here's where you have to click on each question and you're gonna click on the words answer key. And here you can fill in whatever dot is the answer. You can also give a point value to your question. How many points is it worth? Once you have submitted your answer, told it a point value, you click on done. And then you scroll to the next one. Now there is this little required button where if you slide that over, that means that they have to answer that question. Otherwise, they can't turn in their form. So if they skip that question um, and they tried to submit it, it wouldn't work. So you have to do that for each one. So I have to click on here, answer key, select my answer. A little green check mark will show so you know that's the answer that they're accepting. Point value, and you can click on done. Now there is an answer feedback area that if you want to do, you can. So let's say I get the question wrong. I could give feedback and say, sorry, incorrect. And then correct answers, I would say, way to go. And I'm going to go ahead and click on save. So now, no matter what answer somebody gives, if they give it right, they're going to get the message, way to go. If they got it wrong, they're going to say, sorry, incorrect. Lastly, you want to probably take a quick look with the eyeball there to see what does it actually look like. So this is what it's going to look like um, to the person. It's going to open that up as a new tab. All right. So if you see an error or something, just close that tab, go right back into your form, which is like your edit mode, and fix what you need to do. And the eyeball is where you can preview it. Okay. To get this to me... There is no turn in button. So you're going to go to send. You're going to click on the chain right here to get the link. You can even shorten that up by hitting shorten URL. And now you're going to copy that. 
Now, all you have to do is submit that to me in, in your Google Classroom. So I'm going to go to a different um, look on my screen because it just helps with me trying to view this. I'm not sure if I can do that. It may not let me do that. But anyways, when you go into Google Classroom there, um, where it says to add and create, you're going to click on that. And one of your options is to add a link. So you'll click on link and then you'll hit control V to paste this little link into your assignment. You'll go ahead and turn that in and that way I can tell you're done. I'll be able to look at your form and then we'll be able to take all these forms and put them into a spreadsheet so everybody can see the links and then we can have our classmates try to answer our forms. Um, good luck with finishing your form. If you have questions, don't be free to email me and I wish you good luck.